TV trash. This is another one that I've been looking at for a long time. In fact, outside of The Flying Nun, this might be the oldest potential review I hadn't gotten around to before now. And yeah, there are some definite reasons for that, as you'll see. Long-time viewers are probably aware that I have long resisted reviewing web shows, with the lone exception being when the cartoon Hero and I went after the animated adaptation of the Control-Alt-Delete webcomic. However, even in the relative few years since I started TV Trash, the production of web shows has increased exponentially, to the point where full-scale productions are being made exclusively for Netflix and other online distributors including the revitalization of old shows many felt were left dead and buried. And yet the likes of Fuller House and The Return of Arrested Development were all preceded by one revival you may never have heard of. The Greatest American Hero is one of the more well-known cult shows out there, released in 1981 as a parody of the sci-fi superhero shows that were all the rage in the 1970s. William Catt plays special ed teacher Ralph Hinckley, who is given the beta version of Mork from Mork spacesuit, which gives him superpowers. And thus he becomes a tool of federal agent Bill Maxwell to stop criminals in Los Angeles and around the world. Not that he's an effective tool, since the suit keeps malfunctioning on him because he literally lost the manual. The series may now be most known for one of the catchiest theme songs in history, but at the time it did have a pretty big following. In fact, the only reason it ended after just two seasons is William Catt left to try and pursue a movie career, a move he himself has since admitted was a bad choice. There have since been numerous attempts to revive the series, starting with a 1986 spin-off attempt called The Greatest American Heroine, in which the pilot was never picked up. And there have been two announcements on plans to reboot the series since 2014. But the only successful attempt to revive this series so far came from, of all things, a web series that hit the internet roughly a decade ago. And trust me, this was not just some cheap fanfic attempt. It all started when aspiring actor and comedian Alan Ruckert drew the attention of Frank Zanka, who started up the online video site StayTunedTV.net. A few months after Ruckert was cast in one show for the site, Zanka approached him again with the idea of reviving the iconic series. At Ruckert's suggestion, they brought in Mitch Yapko to direct, and he and Ruckert both worked on a pilot episode. Then the most amazing thing happened when they actually obtained permission from the original show's creator Stephen J. Cannell to go ahead with making it an official continuation of the actual show. Huh, so actually asking permission from the creators can work sometimes. Who knew? If getting the license wasn't impressive enough, Ruckert, Zank, and company were really blown away by the cast they were able to assemble. Ruckert was tagged for replacing William Catt as Ralph Hinckley, but then they landed former That 70s Show star Don Stark to play Bill Maxwell. Morgan Snyder, who did have some credits guest starring on an episode or two of Law & Order, landed the role of Pam Davidson. Meanwhile, one of the new characters created was cast by former Veronica Mars star Dwayne Daniels. And here I am considering it would be lucky if Nash Bozard would make a guest appearance on one of my shows. Once the pilot episode was filmed, it was broken up into six segments of about five to six minutes each, which does make some sense, as at the time, the idea that a full-length video or episode was watchable on the internet was still a foreign concept. But how did this finished pilot project come out? Well, it's time to finally take a look at the Greatest American Hero web series and find out for ourselves. 
After an exposition dump explaining the original show's backstory, we get the old Joey Scarberry theme song with footage from the original opener spliced in with new footage showing the new cast members. Then we open in Ralph Hinckley's class, where he's apparently been promoted out of the remedial classes, and I think these two are supposed to be among the students who got moved up as well. For the record, I wasn't a huge viewer of the original show, so I don't recall if these characters were in Ralph's original class. But most importantly, we are introduced to the definite new girl of the class, Ashley Rizzo, played by Brittany Ross, who did have a bit role in forgetting Sarah Marshall prior to this show. So, Mr. H. Hinkley. Hinkley. <laughs> Gee, she even sounds like a Brittany. So does that mean you feel responsible for your students? <laughs> like, Rhonda? Yeah, Rhonda, Tony, the whole class, uh-huh. Including me. So just curious, is one of the suit's powers that it makes you a chick magnet or something? Really? <gasps> what was that? I thought Rhonda was bad. Finders keepers. <laughs> Did... Did the suit just procreate? I mean, it's pretty obvious. She touches Ralph, sparks fly, and then BAM! A drop of splooge morphs into a whole new suit! Is this something the cinema snob should be reviewing? He did used to play this show's theme song on his videos, after all. As if to suggest that further, we then cut to Ralph and Pam about to get hot and heavy in celebration of Ralph's promotion. So guess who shows up to be a buzzkill? Hey, Don Stark does have experience breaking up two people about to get it on. There was a theft. It's a prototype device that detects weird alloys or something or other. But it was stolen from a federal research center. The handoff is going down tonight. Ralph! Hey! Where'd he go? Wow, it only took him two years to discover the suit could let him pop out when he doesn't want to listen to Bill's crap. We then cut to Ashley trying on the second suit, which naturally is able to fit her perfectly. One size fits all. Doesn't make my Mork spacesuit joke sound dumb now, does it? Oh, and we also hear Patty Smith the warrior in the background. I guess to assure this thing still takes place in the 80s? <laughs> Right, sweetie. Daddy! Oh, hi, Principal Van Clemens. Where did you get that suit? Why don't you have any pants? Oh, yeah, about that. Way too dorky. Okay, seriously. First, we have the suit blatantly reproducing sexually. Our main couple about to make whoopee on the set. And now we have a grown-ass teacher just popping into his teenage student's bedroom. Should I have called on Count Jackula to review this thing with me? She's new partner. That's it. You and Maxwell. So yep, the main theme of this new series is that Ralph has to take on an apprentice. You'd think now would have been a good time for those aliens to send him, you know, a replacement manual or something. Oh, that's good. A teeny bopper? Oh, I guess next thing you're gonna tell us is she's a cheerleader. You know, it's funny you should mention that. Oh, actually. no. <laughs> ah, damn it, it's the 80s, so I can't make a Heroes or Kim Possible joke. Wear the pants. Yeah, they keep asking about the skirt, and all I'm thinking is who thought pink Ugg boots were a good look to go with them? Wait, were Uggs even popular in the 80s? Oh, look at the time, guys. Don't we have a handoff to interrupt? Yeah, yeah, yeah we yes. do. Oh. Now, Miss Davidson here, she's gonna drive you home. Wow. Oh. So, now we're left asking the big question of the night. Who's in a more unfortunate situation? Bill dealing with Ralph? Nice landing pilot. I want to keep it down. See, we're supposed to surprise the bad guys when we show up. Or Pam dealing with Ashley. What's he seeing you anyways? Excuse me? I mean, I guess you're pretty and all, but hello, I'm a cheerleader. <laughs> yes, you are. I think you might be learning to fly a little sooner than you think. One of them's already imagining the cat fight, I'm telling you right now. 
Oh, I wonder what Mr. H and that old guy are doing right now. No! To sum up this climax, Ralph and Bill get the drop on the handoff with some familiar music playing in the background. But Ashley showing up allows the one dressed like a drag to get away. And yet you'd think Bill would still be thrilled that he got out of this case without breaking an arm or something else bad happening to him. Thanks to Hannah Montana over here, we lost the device. Okay, time out! Hannah Montana? So is this thing actually taking place in the present day after all? Space is warped and time is bendable. The next day, Ralph tries to teach Ashley how to use the suit. That, after two years, even he hasn't been able to master. I'm sure there won't be hijinks at all. This is the one. Swing better. Cause it's a girl's night. It's alright without you. You know what? At least they didn't play Miley's version of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. And you know what? I think these flying effects are actually better than what was in the original show. I know I'm not real smart, and I'm not that popular, and nobody really likes me, but you treat me like I'm someone important, and I just want to say thank you. And just for that, Wait a month before I murder your girlfriend in her sleep. <clears throat> Look, Bill, the suit chose her for a reason. Can we please just play this one out? <sighs> All right, fine. But it doesn't mean I have to like, it doesn't mean I have to like her. Yeah, but I get the feeling you never liked anything, Bill. And so the pilot episode ends with what the what, what, what? <laughs> Forget it, dude. The angry video game nerd already found those old cartridges. Are... are they serious? They actually found the suit's instruction manual? So this mysterious evil being knew about Ralph's suit? And now he's got the means for how to make it work? So, so this series would have an actual central villain? Maybe a centralized story arc? Oh my god, this is really intriguing! What happens next? Damn it, the puff spewing bucket hell! Yeah, it's really too bad because my questions about when this thing takes place aside, this wasn't that bad considering what the creators had to work with. It does look like they were trying to recapture the spirit of the original show while adding in new characters that could push it into another chapter. It's not hard to see where they plan to go with this. We were gonna get a love triangle between Ralph, Pam, and Ashley with the two delinquent kids possibly helping to spread gossip. And do I even need to elaborate on that cliffhanger? Sadly, none of that came to be as everyone involved pretty much got tied up with other projects after this pilot was finished. And then Stephen J. Cannell died about a year after it was released on the web. Still, all in all, this was a pretty impressive piece of work. And it's a pretty good precursor to the eventual trend of using the internet to revive classic and beloved shows. Even if it wasn't able to get past the pilot stage. The entire thing is currently available on Alan Ruckert's own YouTube channel, so go ahead and check it out yourself. But you know what? I'm starting to realize that... Maybe I'm not giving you guys what you really want. I mean, I'm only doing TV trash once a month now, and everyone this season so far I've given a positive review to, and you guys don't want that. You want me ranting and going crazy. And hell, I don't want people rioting over my show like it's Szechuan sauce or something. So you know what? Next time on TV Trash, I'm gonna do a Patreon requested review. And hopefully, it will be something that can really cause me to just go completely vocal and emotional towards something really terrible and crazy. OH YOU GOTTA BE KIDDING ME!